Mr. Raymond, um, thank you very much to accepting our interview. Uh, welcome. Uh, the first question: um, Could you give us a general picture of the management efficiency gap in our two parts of supply chain between China and Europe, and then between China and the United States? It's certainly not a, not an easy question. Let me let me evaluate first of all. Uh, <clears throat> There's one thing where China is certainly ahead, which is just managing this huge growth, you know, because uh, we all know that the market in China in car uh, demand and, and sales is, is tremendous and outperforms more or less every other market in the world. So I think uh, on one hand, I, I, I uh, pay uh, my respect to the Chinese OEMs and the supplier to manage that impressive growth, you know, building capacity, building the factories to to, to uh, deliver to this growth. Uh, on the other hand, certainly there are aspects and I would say one is certainly uh, about the whole inbound supply chain. I think uh, if I compare that as a European uh, with the level of uh, interactions between a, a European OEM with its local suppliers and most of them are local, there's a very close tie between them, the, the inventory between OEM and uh, part, supply, uh, part supplier is in many cases very minimal, you know? You know, I, I know examples where, where they just ask for a 24 or 48 hour delivery, that's it, and so that, that means that the whole rules are set to deliver almost with, with, with very, very low inventory between uh, suppliers and OEMs. So that is one advantage where we'd say we are not yet at that level here. So I think the inbound supply chain is 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 not as perfect. I, I my assumption is I don't have exact figures, but uh, the inbound uh, inventory is much higher here. Uh, I think the second one is, which is maybe uh, which is not supply chain related, is about uh, uh, R and D management. I think what you see in Europe and also US is that the interaction with the suppliers are not only on the on the supplying parts, supplying components, it's also on, on in the area of R&D. So who is doing the innovation? And I know that in, in Europe a lot of suppliers bring the innovation to the OEMs and so the OEMs don't have to do it themselves. And, and here I think uh, the capabilities of the Chinese suppliers have to increase. Because uh, if, you know, I think while the volume is very high, you could see, still say uh, innovation is not at the at the level where it is, in, be it in Japan or be it in, in, in Europe or US. So I would say uh, that's partially due because the suppliers cannot contribute as much as they do in Europe to, uh, to the innovation of their components and in the final uh, stage to the innovation of a car. So I think the, to, to recap in a summary, the supply chain is not as, uh, as perfect or managed because there are just you know, buffers of inventory and the connectivity is not at the level which it could be. The second one, I think it's in the R&D uh, innovation part where I could imagine that uh, there need to be more work done. In terms of management efficiency, in which aspect do you think Chinese homegrown OEMs should improve themselves? That's difficult. <laughs> First of all, again, if, if I look at the OEM landscape, uh, there are certainly clear, clear winners. You know, be it the uh, the MNCs who have joint ventures who are very successful, but also companies like Cherry and, and Geely, etc., who have uh, over time grown to a dramatic, uh, impressive uh, uh, market share. So I think here the 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 thing is. Uh, I think I'm convinced that this grow will, growth will go on for, uh, for, for several years. Uh, on the other hand, I, I would say, given all the debate about uh, fuel consumption, environmental safety standards, the demand is there to, to uh, beef up the, the products. It, it also goes into the direction of innovation, you know, that means uh, consumption, um, EU norm, the EU 4 norm, and EU five norms are uh, getting at a certain stage uh, implemented here in China, so that means a lot of fine tuning on the engine transmission, etc. Part. So I think this is something where our, the Chinese OEMs are challenged. Um, uh, I think all of them, 
and uh, I think this this is, is certainly for me one of uh, I think one of the biggest challenge next to managing the growth etc. But this is more you know coming by demand, but um, you know how to manage the innovation in in that direction. Let's talk about the management of the supply chain and the sourcing. In automotive industry, there are different types of cooperative relations between OEMs and auto parts suppliers. Compared to their counterparts in North America, the OEMs have closer relations with auto parts suppliers in Japan, Korea, and the European countries. So what do you think of the relations between the OEMs in China and the auto parts suppliers? Um, to start with, what what happened what, what what happened over the many many years of cooperation between whatever Chinese OEM, uh, Japanese OEMs with their suppliers, be it worldwide or European or U.S. Uh, OEMs with their suppliers. I think what you see there, this is a history of very close cooperation, education, training of each other. So that that means um, you are in in at least for example in Europe OEMs and and. Uh, uh, the, the key suppliers are almost on the same level, you know, of, of knowledge, technology, uh, etc. So, uh, I, I, my impression is uh, this is not yet here, uh, the, the, the case. So, I would say the, the, the biggest challenge is how do we, can we educate uh, the suppliers from the AOM perspective in terms of, uh, you know, be it lean, be it uh, smooth supply chain, be it uh, uh, on-time deliveries, etc. So I think here the challenge will be uh, uh, from the OEMs to, to invest in that uh, training efforts. I know there's a lot of going on and we all know about the Toyota, how much effort they put in in, in educating with teams, uh, their suppliers. I know it also from others, uh, other OEMs that they are heavily investing in their supplier skills. So I think that's a major, uh, I would say, challenge to uh, to train these suppliers and, and frankly a lot of that training has to come from the OEM towards their suppliers. Auto pass buyers worldwide are now very enthusiastic about sourcing in China. Does this mean that OEMs worldwide will readjust their supply chain? What challenge do you think this readjustment would bring to the management of auto pass suppliers? I think there are uh, <clears throat> several challenges. There's the one case that uh, China will be used more and more uh, or leveraged in, in, su su in supplying OEMs outside China. That means you, 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 you deliver your parts into US and into Europe. This, uh, this won't happen to agree of 50-60%. I think still in Europe and US you will have a lot of local supplies, but I think that the parts sourced from China the degree of percentage will be will be much higher over time. That means for the for the Chinese suppliers, you have to build up a global supply chain. That means you have to learn how to manage not just uh, whatever uh, delivering into into Chinese OEM uh, final assembly factories, but how to manage uh, a flow probably via uh, containers would take what three or four weeks from from Shanghai to LA or three to four weeks from Shanghai to Rotterdam. So that means you have to manage such a long supply chain, and and this is not an easy one uh, to do. So you have to stock maybe in warehouses in Europe and in in, in the U.S., uh, which needs to you know have you have to you have to have the systems and the transparency on this inventory in place uh, once you want to source from China into these markets. Uh, the second one is certainly that um, the second case is that these. Uh, international OEMs as they are already are here in China and and I think uh, <coughs> we talked about that this is uh, you know they, they have their special demand they come with a history of supplier interaction from Europe from US so I think also on this side the the need for as I said before supplier development in in, in the lean high quality uh, being flexible towards product uh, changes in the OEM final assembly uh, will will increase over time. 